What's going on guys, my name is Matt and I am back with a new PC build. This time I'm going back to my roots and doing a budget gaming PC using used parts. Recently, I gave myself the challenge of putting together the best gaming PC possible for the price of $400. In this video, I'm going to be showing you this $400 system, how I was able to get all the parts, and how it performs in both gaming and in streaming. Then I'll be showing you what I'd do if I had $40 or $50 left in the budget to make this thing look as amazing as it performs. Just a disclaimer, like I said, this is using used parts that I deal hunted for, so this video isn't meant to be a guide on how to put together a gaming PC for $400, and is more meant to show you that if you put in the time, effort, and research, you can put together a pretty powerful gaming PC on the cheap. So without further ado, let's get into the story behind this $400 gaming beast. So I periodically browse parts on eBay and one of the sections that I check sometimes is desktops that are for parts or not working. When looking there this time, I found a bunch of listings for pre-builds that had the CPU, graphics card, and RAM removed. They were all being sold as is, untested, but if all the parts in them worked, it would have been an insane value. For example, after looking at a bunch of them, I pulled the trigger on this listing here. This is an ABS pre-built PC, and while it didn't have detailed specs, I could see it had an AM4 board, likely B350 or B450. I could see it was using an 80 plus gold rated 600 watt power supply. It had a 512 gigabyte SSD pre-installed. And finally, it came inside a pretty nice deep cool case that included four RGB fans. All of this for only $106 with free shipping. These parts new would likely total around $300, and buying them individually used would have likely cost over $200, which is about double the amount I paid for this combo. Now there was a big glaring issue listed in the description in big bold font that I somehow missed, but we'll get into that later. With that part purchased, I knew I needed a CPU, a cooler, a graphics card, and RAM. For the CPU, I looked at a few different options and ended up snagging a Ryzen 5 1600 with stock cooler for just under $69 on eBay. The listing did say it was an AF variant, but the model number was not visible in the photo which wasn't a big deal to me and I was excited to see which 1600 version I was going to get. For RAM, I knew I just wanted a basic 16GB kit and after some deliberating, I ended up grabbing a 2x8GB kit of this XPG Z1 DDR4 RAM. I'll talk about this more later, but for only $47 on Amazon, it was a pretty good deal and fit well into the budget. The final part I had to purchase was the graphics card. Thankfully, GPU prices have been dropping heavily as of late. Hopping onto eBay, I did some searching and found 1070s were starting to sell for under $200 and could actually fit into the budget if I found the right one. After watching a bunch of listings, I ended up winning an auction for this PMY 1070 for only $168 shipped, which was a really good deal. With that part purchased, I just had to wait for everything to arrive, and once they got here, I could start opening them up. Let's start with the CPU. Opening it up, I found a first gen Ryzen box, meaning this was most certainly not a 1600 AF, and was a normal one. Pulling it out, I found a Ryzen 5 1600 CPU, and a Wraith Spire cooler. These first gen Ryzen 1600s actually came with much beefier coolers than the current Ryzen 5 CPUs do, and these ones actually include copper slugs, which is great to see, and means there should be be more room for overclocking. The Ryzen 5 1600 is a 6 core 12 thread CPU that released in 2017 and at the time it offered mind blowing performance for its price. While the IPC isn't great on it, it still performs very well in gaming and in workstation applications. For a $400 system like this one, I think it's a great pick. Next I decide to open up the bare bones pre-built. Opening it up, I found some lackluster packaging and pulling the case and parts out, I found there was something missing. The side panel was nowhere to be found. I swore the listing showed a window, but going back to the listing, I somehow missed this giant message saying there was no side panel included. This was definitely a bummer and I will be DIYing something later in the video, but the budget had already been used up so I had to continue on without one. On first visual inspection, everything looked pretty good. It basically looked like a full system someone just ripped the CPU, RAM, and GPU out of, which it pretty much was. The motherboard turned out to be a Gigabyte B450M DS3H Wi-Fi. This is actually a very solid budget AM4 motherboard with four DIMM slots, good PCIe expansion, and decent back panel I.O. Also, like the name implies, it does have Wi-Fi included in the board itself. 
Installed in the M.2 slot was a 512GB Intel 660P SSD. This is a kind of basic NVMe drive, but having a 512GB NVMe SSD and a $400 build is pretty darn good no matter which model it is. The 660Ps are known to slow down a bit when filled to capacity, which isn't the end of the world and is something a lot of budget SSDs do. The power supply is this Thermaltake Smart 600W PSU that's 80 plus gold certified. This isn't the best unit in the world, but again, for a $400 build, it's better than what I would normally fit into this budget. The only real downside of this unit is the ketchup and mustard cables, which is another thing I will somewhat fix towards the end of the video. Finally, the case is this Matrix 50 from Deepcool and is one I've built in a number of times. This used to be one of the best 70 ish dollar cases because of how good it looks and the fact it comes with four included RGB fans. Yes, it is a solid front glass panel, but it performs decently well airflow wise, taking that into consideration. Now, before I could start putting in parts, I need to open the last two boxes. For RAM, again, I got a 2x8GB kit of XPG Z1 memory at 3200MHz CL16. This is basic, but it's still fast enough to get most of the performance out of the 1600 when XMP is enabled. 16GB is plenty for modern gaming, streaming, and even 1080p video editing. Finally, I opened up the graphics card. This 1070 came in its original box. It was a bit dusty, but overall looked in good condition. The GTX 1070 released almost six years ago in 2016, and even though it is a bit old at this point, it still offers plenty of raw performance and eight gigabytes of video memory. Relative performance wise, it's gonna be a bit worse than something like a GTX 1660 Super and RTX 3050. So with all the parts unboxed, I was ready to put this system together. I decided just throw it all in there as is and would neaten up cable management later. Building this took like 10 minutes total because all I had to do was install the CPU, then install the CPU cooler, I plugged in both of the RAM sticks, and finally plugged in the GPU and GPU power. So with everything in, it was the moment of truth time. I plugged in the system, turned on the power button, and success. It actually booted into a pre-installed Windows distro that could be set up with my info, and I was in Windows within a few minutes of turning it on. Sure, cable management wasn't amazing, but the system was up and running, ready to be tested, and again, I'll be focusing on the aesthetics in a bit. So before we fix the looks of the system, let's see how it performs in gaming. Everything was left at stock settings with the exception of the RAM, which I did enable XMP on, but other than that, again, everything was at stock, and without further ado, here are the benchmarks.
So as you can see, gaming performance is pretty darn good for the $400 price tag. In terms of streaming, I tested the streaming Valorant and Cyberpunk to Twitch at 1080p 60fps. I'm happy to say that both provided great experiences on the stream end and on my end. The $400 system is technically complete, but I wanted to make it look a bit better. The main thing I wanted to focus on were the ketchup and mustard cables and the complete lack of a side panel. For the cables, I bought a $20 or $25 set of sleeved cable extensions, which just like the name implies, these plug into the ends of existing cables, giving the system a nice custom look. I went for all black ones, but there are literally dozens of colorways you could go with, and I'll link a few in the description below. I used these and also rerouted some of the cables, like the front panel ones, so that they came out behind the motherboard. Doing this, along with the extensions, cleaned up the looks a ton, but there was still the glaring issue of a lack of side panel. The best solution to this would probably just be to email Deepcool to get a replacement panel, which shouldn't cost too much, but I wanted to see what I could DIY. After looking at some options, I realized acrylic is really expensive right now, so instead of getting one large sheet, I got two 12 by 16 inch pieces, one clear and one in black for about $7 each. I took the black one, scored it down the middle a bunch of times, then snapped it in half. For the large clear piece, I drilled a few holes for the standoffs to slip through. There was some chipping, but honestly, it's it's not noticeable at all. I made sure to go slow and let the bit do the work. For the bottom black pieces, I actually decided to attach it with magnets that I glued to the back. I ended up having to glue nearly 10 to keep it from sliding, but in the end it worked out pretty well. It gave me this cool two-tone design that I think looks quite nice. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comment section below. The big downside is this is acrylic and not glass, so it scratches super easy, and again sourcing a replacement panel probably would have been the best option. I didn't have time, but I originally thought that adding a GPU backplate using the black acrylic left over from the one that I cut would be a good idea. Finally, I want to share a big goof up I made, so I took the front panel off to clean it, and when pressing it back on, I felt some resistance but forced it and ended up severing a fan cable. I was able to strip twist and solder the cable back together. I use electrical tape because I didn't have any heat shrink which worked fine but I'll probably go back and redo it with heat shrink in the future. This isn't a super important point, I just like to show my mistakes. It's easy to see someone like myself who builds tons of systems and think I don't ever mess anything up in a build but the reality is I definitely do. So yeah, all in all for $400 or about $440 with the aesthetic upgrades, I think I was able to put together a pretty baller system. Now obviously there are tons of ways you could have spent this budget, so if you would have done something differently, let me know in the comments below. I haven't done one of these used builds in a long time, so I'm interested to hear your feedback and see how it performs. If you guys like this video, I'll definitely be doing more used builds in the near future. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. If you enjoyed it, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Oh, and as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.